This man's name is Joe Ha. He used to be an MMA athlete who held the title of Asian champion, but because of a fight with a referee, his career was ruined. Now he had nothing at all. At the age of 40, he didn't have a job, no place to live, and no partner. He had nobody else but himself. His mother left him when he was little while his father was in prison. On the other hand, this old woman is in Suk. Since her husband died, she had been a single parent to his autistic yet genius piano player, Jin Ta. Even though he never learned to play the piano, no idea how to read notes or song chords, but once he heard the music, he immediately memorized it and could even play it straight away. At the boxing gym, Joha had just finished training and made his opponent battered. In the boss's office, he was scolded for being too far in that training and beat the kid excessively. The kid was going to have an important tournament by next week, but since he was seriously injured, he would definitely not be able to compete. And because Joha's mistake was quite fatal, the boss fired him. After Joha returned from the gym, he stopped by and spent time at the comic cafe until he fell asleep there. At home, every night when in -Suk went to work, Jin Ta would play with the neighbor's daughter, Su Jong. Both had been used to being left behind by their parents so often, so they always played together. The two became really close, even Su Jong told Jin Ta to marry her when they grew up. Jin Ta could only answer yes. In the middle of the night, when it was raining heavily, Jo Ha invited his friend to eat at a small restaurant. Coincidentally, the restaurant was where In Suk worked. When Jo Ha and In Suk looked at each other, suddenly they both froze. Without saying a word, Jo Ha immediately left. In Suk tried to hold him while making sure whether the man in front of her was really Jo Ha, the biological son of her first husband, whom she had abandoned when he was little. After the restaurant closed, they both had a conversation. In Suk asked Jo Ha some questions about his life. In Suk was very worried and happy because she hadn't seen him for decades, but Jo Ha didn't answer a single question. He just remained silent, disappointed, and didn't want to look at his mother's face. After they parted on the street, Jo Ha was very drunk. He stumbled into the middle of the street and got hit by a speeding car. The next morning, In Suk kept thinking about Jo Ha when Jin Ta came in and lay down with her. She told him about Jo Ha. When Jin Ta heard that, he was happy to find out that he had an older brother. That night, Jo Ha woke up at the hospital and was confused as to how he ended up there. Meanwhile, seeing a critical patient who suddenly looked healthy, even though his neck was broken and battered, the nurse ran away in fear. The next morning, Jo Ha was as healthy as if he had never been hit by a car. He was invited to come to the house of a rich woman named Ga Yul. Ga Yul was the one who hit him yesterday. While they were eating, instead of apologizing, Ga Yul's mother accused him of deliberately crashing himself to get money. Upon hearing that, Jo Ha was offended and left without asking for a penny. In the evening, In Suk went to meet Jo Ha who was distributing brochures on the streets. While they were sitting together, again, In Suk asked the same questions she asked the last time and then invited Jo Ha to live with her. At first, Joha refused, but when he saw his mother's sad face, he finally agreed. When they got home, In Suk introduced Joha to his half brother, Jin Ta, but Joha's expression was indifferent as if he didn't want to admit him. After that, In Suk told Joha to sleep in Jin Ta's room while Jin Ta would sleep together with her. In the middle of the night, when Joha was sleeping, he was shocked to find Jin Ta sleeping next to him, and because Jin Ta was so noisy, Joha hit him until he fainted. The next morning, while Jo Ha was hanging out in the park, his friend offered him a part-time job as a sparring opponent for an MMA athlete that would pay him 200.0001, but because Jo Ha hadn't trained for a long time, while his opponent was a professional MMA athlete, he would be sure battered, but even though he had been warned about that. For the 200,001, Jo Ha was still determined to take the job, but when he sparred against the MMA athlete, he was immediately beaten. When Jova came home, Jin Ta saw him and hurriedly put on a head protector because he was afraid of being hit again. After taking a shower, Joma played a video game with Jin Ta and Su Jong, but because he kept losing, he was annoyed and left for work. And that was when Ga Yul's assistant came to pick him up to meet Ga Yul. Ga Yul then explained that she felt guilty. She told the truth that she was very frustrated that night. She was speeding and wanting to end her life, but instead, she accidentally hit Jo Ha. While showing off her prosthetic leg, Ga Yul said that in the past, she was the victim of a hit and run. Her leg had to be amputated and her career was ruined. She just didn't want to run away from responsibility like that person, so as an apology and compensation, she offered 2 million won. Seeing Ga Yul's sincerity, Jo Ha accepted it. At home, Jo Ha remembered his idol, the boxing legend Muhammad Ali. He then stuffed the paper with motivational words from Muhammad Ali, written on it to his closet as encouragement. He was sure that one day he would be able to return to being a professional MMA athlete and win a championship like before. 
That night, when Joha had just come home from hanging out, he saw his mother waiting for him at the door. He couldn't take it anymore and finally told Insook to stop caring about him too much since it was too late for her. She had been abandoning him for years and caring about him now wouldn't make it up for it. He said that he would never forgive her. He said that he was only staying temporarily until he got enough money to move. Hearing that, Insook was sad. Meanwhile, in Joha's room, he felt guilty for hurting his mother's heart. The next morning, because their mother had to go to work, Joho was the one who took Jinta for rehabilitation. But when they just got on the bus, suddenly Jinta needed to go to the toilet. After getting off, Jinta couldn't take it any longer and immediately took off his pants and went behind the bush. Jova tried to cover him up, but unfortunately, an officer passed by and saw what they were doing. They were both caught and taken to the police station. That night when they came home, Insook looked worried and was waiting outside the house. When she found out they had both been detained at the police station, Insook was shocked and scolded Joha for being an unreliable older sibling. Seeing the mother he had longed for showed her love for Jinta so much that she got angry without wanting to hear the explanation first, he was heartbroken. He went away and vented all his sadness by challenging yesterday's MMA athlete to a rematch. At home while waiting for Joha to come home, Insook reflected on all her mistakes in the past. Almost every day, her ex-husband beat her, until one night, because she couldn't stand it anymore, she cried and ran away from home, leaving little Joha alone. On the street, she was so depressed that she wanted to jump off a bridge. Luckily, a man held her back. It was that man who saved her life and finally became her new husband, the father of Jinta. In the middle of the night, when Joha came home, he told Jinta to take off his headgear because he wouldn't hit him anymore and because they weren't sleepy yet. They both played video games together all night until they fell asleep. In the morning, when Insook had just come home from work on the night shift, he saw Joha and Jinta sleeping in front of the TV. She felt relieved because her two sons got along well. In the evening before going to work, Insook asked Joha to accompany Jinta to a national piano competition that would be held in three weeks. She told Joha that she would be working out of the city because the owner of the restaurant where she worked had just opened a branch in Busan, and she was assigned to look after the branch there temporarily. She gave him money for living expenses this month while she was not home, and without asking too much, Joha accepted it. After chatting, Insook was confused about why Jinta and Sujong took so long to come home and asked Joha to look for them. When Joha came to the park, he saw Jinta and Sujong being bullied by some delinquents. When Joha came, he casually challenged the boys to bet. For three minutes, whoever could hit him just once would be given 10,000 won, but if they failed, they were the ones who had to give him 10,000 won. With a flawless movement, Joha avoided all their hit and won the fight. After returning from the park on the street, they met Sujong's mother, and after greeting them, she continued to go to work. The next morning, so that Jin Tao wouldn't be bullied, Jova tried to teach him how to fight properly. But because Jin Tae's movements were difficult to predict, he managed to punch Joha in the face until he got a nosebleed. That evening, Jin Ta, Joha, and Insook ate together outside. Insook said the three of them rarely got together, so every now and then she wanted to have dinner together at a fancy restaurant. When she saw other visitors celebrating birthdays while being photographed, she was jealous. She just remembered that in her entire life, she had never taken a family photo at all. And since they were together at that moment, she asked the waiter to take a photo of them while saying that it was Joha's birthday. At first, Joha refused to be embarrassed by taking photos like a child. It was impossible for him, a former MMA champion fighter, to take photos like that, but whatever he said, when he saw his mother's sad face, his heart would definitely melt. In the middle of the night at home, when Jin Tao was sleeping, In Sook and Jo Ha were chatting together. Since her son was old enough, In Sook poured a glass of wine and put on the music she used to play when Jo Ha was little. In Sook looked happy because even though it was just dinner at a restaurant and taking photos together, for her, it was the most beautiful night of her life, and Sook was so happy that she asked Joha to accompany her to dance, and even though he didn't seem like he wanted to. But to make his mother happy, Joha danced for her. In the morning, and Sook left for Busan. After their mother left, Joha asked Jin Ta what he usually did when their mother was not home. Jin Ta said that there was nothing to do all day. He just ate, slept, played games, or used the piano. Hearing that, Joha said that the boys had to be able to do sports and earn their own money. Jova then invited Jinta to help with his work. In the middle of working, Joha left Jinta for a while, but when he returned, Jinta was missing. He panicked and hurriedly looked for him. On the other hand, Jinta was watching a girl play the piano in the park. After the little girl had finished playing, Jinta tried to play the piano too. Soon, Joha found Jinta. Seeing Jinta playing the piano, Joha was so amazed that he froze. 
This was the first time he saw with his own eyes his autistic half-brother playing the piano. Everyone was so amazed that people started giving him money. After getting a lot of money, Jyotar took Jinta for dinner in a fast food restaurant. He told Jinta to order whatever food he wanted. When Jinta was ordering more food, Joe had checked his brother's phone. When he looked at it, he was shocked to see the video of Ga Yul's piano performance. It turned out that Ga Yul was the most famous pianist in South Korea. The next day, Joha invited Jin Tae to go meet Ga Yul. They were stopped by Ga Yul's assistant, but Joha didn't care and barged in. After meeting Ga Yul, Joha asked for her help to assess whether Jin Tae's piano playing was good and worthy of being the champion in tomorrow's competition. He said that he just wanted Jin Tae to be the champion so that their mother would be happy when she came home. Hearing the request, Ga Yul immediately refused because she had long retired from the world of music. Ga Yul then left them. When they wanted to go home, Jin Ta saw a piano and immediately played it. When Ga Yul heard Jin Ta playing, she suddenly stopped. Slowly, she walked closer and then joined in playing on the piano. The next day, the competition started. Not only Jo Ha and Su Jong, but Ga Yul and her assistant were also present. Since hearing Jin Ta playing, Ga Yul had put an interest in the world of music again. Participant after participant showed their prowess, and finally, it was Jin Tae's turn. Jin Tae, as usual, used his cell phone and watched his favorite game streaming while playing. He then started his performance. The whole performance finally finished, and it was now waiting for the judges to determine the winner. While waiting, Joha called his mother and passed the news. On the phone, In Suk sounded happy that Joha could look after Jin Ta well. Shortly after, the participants gathered to hear the announcement of the winner. Joha, Su Jong, Ga Yul, and her assistant looked confident that Jin Ta would definitely be chosen as champion because his piano playing was perfect. However, when the judges announced the winners and Jin Ta was none of them, Ga Yul was disappointed. In the evening in Ga Yul's house, Ga Yul began to play the piano again. The next day, when Su Jong was having breakfast with Jin Ta, Jin Ta kept saying the name of his idol, namely the beautiful Ga Yul. When she heard that Su Jong was jealous and asked if Jin Ta was cheating and without feeling guilty at all, Jin Ta answered yes. Su Jong was irritated to hear that. In the afternoon, Jo Ha again asked Jin Ta to help spread out brochures. While they were taking a break while eating ice cream, Jin Ta was sad when he looked at the mother and her child across the street. Seeing Jin Tae's expression, Jova tried to cheer him up. He said that he also missed him. He then said that their mother would be home soon. When Jin Ta continued working, he stopped by the clothes shop. He decided to buy new clothes for Jin Ta, but when he returned, Jin Ta was missing. At first, Joho was still calm, but when he found out that Jin Ta wasn't in the park where he usually played the piano, Joha panicked. Even though he had looked for him everywhere, he still hadn't found him. Jin Ta even didn't pick up his call. At home, when Jova saw the door open, he was relieved, thinking Jin Ta had returned home, but inside, it turned out it was not Jin Ta, but In Suk. While adjusting her hat, In Suk said that she was only home for a moment to get an important file, then she had to go back to Buzin. But when she found out that Jin Ta was missing, she panicked and scolded Joha. They then split up to look for him. Late in the afternoon, Joha finally found Jin Ta in a record shop. He was enjoying to music. He was furious and was about to hit him, but In Suk came from behind to intervene. Then she scolded Joha again. When In Suk was crying, Joha was shocked to see the condition of her mother's hair. It turned out that his mother had lost all her hair. After Jin Ta came home and In Suk went to work, Joha went to the restaurant where In Suk worked. Joha asked the truth if his mother was assigned to work at the Buzin City branch. Hearing the question, the restaurant owner was confused. She had never opened a branch there. Joha's suspicion became stronger. He then went to meet Su Jong's mother and threatened her to tell the truth. At first, Su Jong's mother didn't dare to speak, but because she kept being forced, she finally told him about his mother's cancer. After finding out the truth, Joha chose to leave the house. He was disappointed. For decades, he harbored longing for her. But when it started to get better, his mother was once again lied to him and about to leave him again. Joha then met his father in prison and told him that he wanted to go abroad. His friend offered him a job as an assistant martial arts trainer in Canada. His purpose in meeting his father was to say one thing. To never lay his hands on his mother again. He swore that he himself would finish him if he dared. On the other hand, when Jin Ta was alone looking at the piano in his house, Ga Yul and his assistant suddenly showed up. Ga Yul's purpose was to train him directly because she sympathized and was interested in Jin Tae's talent. In the evening, Ga Yul's mother met the director of the most prestigious music school in Korea. The director was the head judge at yesterday's competition, who did not choose Jin Ta to be the champion just because he was mentally challenged. Ga Yul's mother found out about it and said that tomorrow night, when the music school held the big orchestra concert, 
He wanted Jin Tat as the main piano player. At first, the director objected. He was afraid that the appearance of an autistic child would tarnish the good name of the music school, but Ga Yul's mother threatened to sell 51% of her shares in the music school if the director refused. The reason Ga Yul's mother liked Jin Ta was that it was thanks to him that her beloved daughter won to play the piano again after being retired for a long time. Hearing all this, the director was forced to comply. Before leaving for Canada, Joho went to the hospital and greeted his mother for the last time. When In Suk saw him, she apologized for all this time for covering up her illness. While holding back tears, Joha asked why she didn't take him with her when she ran away. Since her disappearance, no one defended him when he was beaten by his father. Every time his father was drunk, little Jova chose to run away and hide in a comic cafe until his father fell asleep. Hearing her son's story, In Suk apologized from the deepest of her heart. She knew that her time was coming to an end and said that if time could be repeated or if she got reborn, she promised that all her life and love would be given only to Joha. Joha, who couldn't hold back the tears, left. As he walked out, he cried uncontrollably. The next day at the airport, while waiting for his flight, Jova saw an interview on TV. The presenter reported that at a grand concert tonight, the main pianist was different from last year's concerts. The main pianist at this concert was a genius child with autism named Jin Ta. When the presenter asked what kept Jin Ta enthusiastic about achieving his dreams despite his disability, Jin Ta quoted the motivational words from the legend Muhammad Ali, which Joha attached to his closet in his room. Hearing Jin Tae's words was a great blow for Joha. He decided to back down from his intention to go abroad and rush to the hospital to get his mother and bring her to the concert. That night, the audience seats were full. After the orchestra members and the conductor were ready, Jin Tae appeared. The whole audience laughed seeing the boy's behavior. Even though it was a concert as usual, Jin Tae still carried his phone while watching the streaming of his favorite game. When everyone was ready for the concert, it finally started. Everyone was amazed. Joha and In Suk were frozen in amazement to see Jin Ta perform flawlessly in front of everyone. At midnight after the concert ended, Joha took Jin Ta to the hospital to visit his mother who was already in a very weak condition. It was the first time Jin Ta found out about his mother's illness. Joha then left so they could spend time together. Unlike Joha or other normal people who could express their sadness, Jin Ta could only remain silent while lying next to his mother. With a weak voice, In Suk asked if Jin Ta was happy to have a big brother. Jin Ta answered yes. In Suk then told him to obey his brother and to help him take care of the house. Hearing all this, Jin Ta was sad as if he already knew that it was his last moment with his mother. The next day after the funeral, Joa came out to take a fresh air. He then met Su Jong's mother who offered him a cigarette, which he calmly accepted. He inhaled the smoke and coughed the very next moment, indicating he never smoked before. To hide his embarrassment, he tried to look for a topic to change the conversation. Not long after that, Su Jong, Ga Yul, Ga Yul's mother and Joe his friend came out and asked if anyone had seen Jin Ta. When they found out that Jin Ta was missing, they all panicked except Joha, who knew well where his brother went. He was in the park playing the piano, 